So today I'll be showing you how to make a Psychic Vampire Bard. Yeah, you heard me right. So let's get this started. So I've chosen the lineage of the Dampyr. It's definitely a player friendly way of playing a vampire without all those pesky weaknesses. And definitely it's a great way to not give your DM an absolute migraine when trying to manage a vampire. So let's talk about Dampyrs. Dampyrs are between life and death. They're not really exactly vampires, but they're not really humans either. They kind of heater on the edge of both, if you will. Similar to a vampire, they have increased speeds, a dark vision, and a life-draining bite. After all, they have this ravenous hunger that relates the two together. Because of this kind of insight to undead, they tend to be adventurers, or at least they lead lives as monster hunters, sometimes hunting down those same vampires that had turned them in the first place. Or just because that kind of life leads them to solitude, where nothing can tempt those hungers. For today's video, we're going to be picking Psychic Energy for our Dampyr's Hunger. As for the origin of your Dampyr, that's really up to you. There are some cool examples though. Perhaps it was necromancy, dealings with an immortal, or of course, an encounter with a vampire. Have a look for yourselves, as there's a table that you can roll on. It's pretty cool. As for the mechanics of the Dampyr, we're going to be picking our size, which is going to be medium. We are classified as humanoid, and of course, we get our classic 60 feet of dark vision. We also don't need to breathe, which is similar to something like the Air Genasi or the Reborn, which is kind of a nifty bonus. Additionally, our speed is increased, and we gain an innate climbing speed. That is definitely unique. The only other race is perhaps the Simic Hybrid or the Tabaxi. So that's awesome. And of course, our Vampiric Bite. So in actual fact, I made a video on how to play a vampire, and I talk about the Dampyrs and a bunch of other things in that video. I'll link it down below if you'd like to give it a look. I'd really appreciate it, but let's get back to the video. As for our ancestral legacy, if you have skills or an innate swimming, flying speeds for example, let's say you're an Owlin or a Triton, you could keep those racial features. This can also include skills such as Goliath getting athletics or Half-Orcs getting intimidation. But as for spells that Tieflings get or resistances, don't carry over, and instead you get your Dampiric abilities instead. For the time being, we'll come back to these skills as right now we're going to go to our background. Our character's name is Erika Zhao, and so I've picked up the archaeologist background for our Dampir Erika. An archaeologist learns about the long lost and fallen civilizations of the past by studying their remains, their bones, their ruins, their surviving masterworks, and their tombs. Those who practice archaeology travel to the far corners of the world to root through crumbled cities and lost dungeons, digging in search of artifacts that might tell stories of monarchs and high priests, wars and cataclysms. But in our case, we search for immortality. We also gain the skills of survival and of course history. And as for our background feature, when you enter a ruin, you can correctly ascertain its original purpose and determine its builders, whether those were dwarves, elves, humans, yuan ti or some other known race. In addition, you can determine monetary value of art objects more than a century old. As for our characteristics, let's start with our personality trait. I have no qualms about stealing from the dead. I'm happier in a dusty old tomb than I am in centers of civilization. As for ideals, I live for danger. With every great discovery comes grave danger. The two walk hand in hand. And of course, immortality. All my exploring is part of a plan to find the secret of everlasting life. As for bonds, I won't sell an art object or other treasure that has historical significance or is one of a kind. And then our flaws. When I'm not exploring dungeons or ruins, I get jittery and impatient. And of course, I can't sleep except in total darkness. Next, let's look at our ability scores. So as for these, I actually rolled these manually and I got some bloody brilliant scores. The lowest being a 13. Sometimes the rolls are really in your favor, other times not so much. So for bards, charisma is our spellcasting ability. So this is very important that we put most of our points into this. Also, it makes us great conversationalists and of course charmers. While dexterity is a great secondary score to go with, 
grants a better stealth, acrobatics, and sleight of hand skills for instance. Also constitution is good just for those extra hit points, and this also matters for our vampiric bite. So let's start making our bard. So for first level, we get a d8 hit dice. So let's talk about bardic inspiration. As a bonus action, a creature other than you, within 60 feet of you, that can hear you, gains an inspiration die. This is a d6, but it does level up as we, you know, level up our character. This dice can be used to add to ability checks, attack rolls, and saving throws. So as for our proficiencies, we get three skills and three musical instruments. So for the instruments, Pick up viol, lute, and lyre. As for skills, we'll pick arcana, deception, and sleight of hand. So let's talk about cantrips. So we get two cantrips and four spells known. Similar to the ranger, our bard has a set number of spells they can learn as they level. Unlike wizards, artificers, druids, clerics, and paladins who can prepare their spells. So cantrips are basically minor level spells. They're not first, they don't require a spell slot, but they tend to be weaker by comparison for that reason. Let me give you a good example as we're going to be picking up vicious mockery. You unleash a string of insults laced with subtle enchantments at a creature you can see within range. If the target can hear you, though it need not understand you, it must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or take 1d4 psychic damage and have disadvantage on the next attack roll it makes before the end of its next turn. And while the damage isn't great, that disadvantage is absolutely clutch. And let's pick up Mage Hand. A spectral floating hand appears at a point you can choose within range. The hand lasts for a duration or until you dismiss it as an action. The hand vanishes if it is ever more than 30 feet away from you, or you cast a spell again. You can use your action to control the hand, and you can use the hand to manipulate an object, open an unlocked door or container, stow or retrieve an item from an open container, or pour the contents out of a vial. You can move the hand up to 30 feet each time you use it. But this hand can't attack, activate magic items, or carry more than 10 pounds. This spell is by far one of the best utility cantrips in D&D 5e. So let's talk about our first level spells. Let's pick up Identify. This kind of fits in with our archaeologist. It allows us to identify magical items, their abilities, properties, and even perhaps curses that are attached to them. We'll also pick up Unseen Servant, but I have an inkling that we'll change it for later. So let's talk about Dissonant Whispers. You whisper a discordant melody that only one creature of your choice within range can hear, racking it with terrible pain. The target must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, it takes 3d6 psychic damage and must immediately use its reaction, if available, to move as far as its speed allows away from you. The creature doesn't move into obvious dangerous ground, such as fire or a pit. On a successful save, the target takes half as much damage and none of those other things apply. And the damage increases as you level. Let's talk about command. This wasn't always a bard spell, which is kind of dumb, but we'll talk about it. You speak one word command to a creature you can see within range. The target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or follow the command on its next turn. These commands are as follows. Approach. The target moves towards you by the shortest and most direct route, ending its turn if it moves within five feet of you. The target drops whatever it is holding and then ends its turn. Perhaps this could be a magic item or the MacGuffin or a weapon or perhaps even their magical focus. Let's talk about second level. So we get Magical Inspiration. This was added in Tosh's and it's an absolutely amazing buff for any bard. So this is to do with your bardic inspiration die. And when a creature casts a spell that restores hit points or deals damage, you can add that inspiration die to those rolls. And there's no action required. It's absolutely fantastic. And of course, Jack of all trades. You can add your proficiency bonus rounded down to any ability check you make that doesn't already include it course song of rest beginning at second level you can use soothing music or orientation to help revitalize your wounded allies during a short rest you can basically add your inspiration die to a short rest it's really great so for spells we're going to be picking up charm person you tend to charm a humanoid you can see within range it must make a wisdom saving throw and does so with advantage if you or your companions are fighting it if it fails, the saving throw is charmed by you until the spell ends or until you or your companions do anything harmful to it. Charmed creature regards you as friendly acquaintance. When the spell ends, the creature knows it was charmed by you. And of course, at higher levels, you can target more than one creature. This is an absolute banger, honestly, and a favorite. Most tables, you'll see one or two players having charmed person at the ready. 
So at third level, we get expertise. I actually talk about expertise in further detail on how to build my rogue. And I'll link it down below if you want to give it a look. You know, it's up to you. But basically, you're going to more than likely succeed easier with those chosen skills. So we'll pick up Deception because we're a vampire and it's also our bardic college. And History because, you know, we're an archaeologist. It just kind of makes sense. And of course, at third level, let's pick our Bardic College, the College of Whispers. So at third level, we gain Psychic Blades. When you hit a creature with a weapon attack, you can expend one use of your Bardic Inspiration to deal an extra 2d6 Psychic Damage to the target. You can do so only once per round on your turn, but this damage also increases as you level. It's pretty great, honestly, and it kind of adds to that Psychic Vampire that we're going for. And of course, Words of Terror. Once per short rest, you can speak to a humanoid alone for one minute and cause it to become frightened of you or another creature of your choice it fails a wisdom saving throw for one hour or until it or its allies are attacked or damaged if the target succeeds it is not aware that you use this ability as for spells we're going to be picking up invisibility for fourth level we're going to be picking up a feat specifically the telepathic feat which was added in tasha's cauldron of everything this increases our charisma by one giving us that beautiful 20 to our charisma plus you're able to speak telepathically to any creature as long as you share a language. This is absolutely incredible. You also learn the Detect Thought spell, and you can cast a spell without expending a spell slot, recharging on a long rest. You can also cast a spell using spell slots if you have the appropriate level. Pretty useful. And we actually get a cantrip this time, and a spell. So I'm going to be picking up Mending, because this kind of adds to the Archaeologist. This spell repairs a single break or tear in an object you touch such as a broken chain link, two halves of a broken key, a torn cloak, or leaking wineskin. And let's pick up Suggestion to kind of keep that beguiling theme of a vampire. As for 5th level, we gain Font of Inspiration. You regain all your expended uses of Bardic Inspiration when you finish a short or long rest. This is amazing. The amount you can do with your inspiration is insane. And just being able to gain it back on a short rest, this is amazing. For our third level spell, I'm going to be keeping with the theme of the Dungeon Delver. So let's pick Speak with Dead. You grant semblance of life and intelligence to a corpse of your choice within range, allowing it to answer the questions you pose. The corpse must still have a mouth and can't be undead. The spell fails if the corpse was a target of the spell within the last 10 days. Until the spell ends, you can ask the corpse up to five questions. The corpse knows only what it knew in life, including the languages it knew. Answers are usually brief, cryptic, or repetitive. The corpse is under no compulsion to offer a truthful answer. So as for sixth level, you have to have a word about counter charm. So as an action, you can form until the end of your next turn. During that time, you have any friendly creature within 30 feet. You can hear you gain advantage on saving throws against being frightened or charmed. It's all right. As for our sixth level feature, now that's a different story. Mantle of Whispers. As a reaction, when a humanoid dies within 30 feet of you, you can capture its shadow until you use it or you finish a long rest. As an action, you can use the shadow to disguise yourself as the dead person for one hour, or until you end it as a bonus action. While disguised, you gain enough information to pass yourself off as the person. Another creature can detect the disguise with an insight check versus your deception check, but you gain a plus five bonus to that. On top of being an expert in it, so the likelihood is very slim, unless you roll a natural one, perhaps. Imagine biting into them and then stealing their shadow away from them, suddenly becoming them before their last moments ebb away, staring back at themselves as they fall to death's embrace. It's a very interesting image. And as for spells, I'm going to be picking up the spell magic. You choose one creature, object, or magical effect within range. Any spell of third level or lower on the target ends. For each spell of fourth level or higher, the target makes an ability check using your spellcasting ability. The DC equals 10 plus your spells level. Successful check, the spell ends. Seventh level, we gain fourth level spells. We're going to be picking up greater invisibility. At 8th level, we're going to be picking up a feat. In this case, we're picking Eldritch Adept, which allows us to pick up one of the awesome invocations of the Warlock. In this case, we'll be picking the Eyes of the Runekeeper. It basically allows us to read all writing. That's the archaeologist's dream. 
And as for spells, I'm going to be picking up one that came from Fizban's Treasury of Dragons. It kind of adds to that psychic damage that we've been looking for. And of course, bards don't get a lot of options when it comes to damage. So unleashing this shimmering lance of psychic power from your forehead, I mean, that's going to do it. It's, it's awesome. I'm not going to go over that spell in detail, so let's get to ninth level. As for ninth level, let's pick ourselves up another spell. In this case, we get a fifth level spell. So we're going to be picking up Dominate Person as it kind of fits with that vampiric theme. You attempt to beguile a humanoid that you can see within range. You must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be charmed by you for the duration. If you're a creature that are friendly and you are fighting it, it has advantage on the saving throw. While the target is charmed, you are telepathically linked with it as long as the two of you are on the same plane of existence. You can use this telepathic link to issue commands to the creature while you are conscious. While it does its best to obey, you can specify a simple general course of action such as attack that creature, run over there, or fetch that object. So this is basically your mind control spell. It's for 10th level. So we get ourselves expertise again. We'll pick up Arcana and Sleight of Hand for now. But as I recall, I haven't actually chosen the Dampier Ancestry skills. So maybe I'll pick up one of those and replace it with that expertise, you know? And Magical Secrets. The absolute darling that this feature is. Seriously. You get to pick two spells from any spell list. And it can be any level up to 5th level at this point. It's absolutely insane, but also kind of intimidating, to be honest. But before we commit to that, I want to actually go and pick up our languages, our tools, and all that kind of stuff. So let's get back to our background. We'll pick up Draconic. I mean, dragons have treasures and artifacts aplenty. I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense. Dwarvish is also kind of similar. It's actually used in a lot of D&D modules, but a lot of people don't pick it up. I mean, let's talk about ruins, carvings, old ancient dwarven maps and the like. I mean, dwarvish is amazing in that sense. And we'll pick up cartographer's tools for reading maps, charting expeditions in the deep ruins and cavernous roads of the Underdark, perhaps. It's a kind of a cool, flavorful tool. We'll also quickly add our equipment and then we'll zip back to the magical secrets. So we're going to be picking Vampiric Touch. This allows you to make a melee spell attack and hit one creature. It takes necrotic damage, a pretty decent chunk, and half as much you heal back. I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? Vampiric Touch. And then, of course, we're going to be picking Death Ward for our secondary contender. After all, Erica strives to be immortal, and unfortunately, we can't get ourselves the clone spell yet, so we'll have to do with Death Ward. When you drop to zero hit points, you come back with one hit point. So Persuasion and Stealth will be the name of the game. And I think we're going to swap Persuasion for Arcana because I think Persuasion kind of adds to that more beguiling vampire, right? We can't be suave without it. <laughs> Look at that deception check. I rolled a 5 and I got an 18. Like, like, wow. This is what I mean. Bards, when it comes to skills, are just... there. There is no other rival. It's absolutely insane. I have a playlist of a bunch of these builds and characters, and I plan to do more. In fact, I'm going to be doing the Paladin probably next. So, if you want to go check them out, I'd really appreciate it. And if you could give me a like and possibly a subscribe, I'd... I'd be so appreciative. Thanks for watching, seriously, and well, I'll talk to you guys later.